Hello, beautiful souls. My name is Alexandra, and I am a heart whisperer, intuitive, multidimensional healer, light language channel, energy reader, and I am here for you today with a new light language transmission. The topic of today is going to be uh, all about stepping into the age of Aquarius. I'm so, so excited to uh, record this video for you today and offer you these transmissions. I can really feel all the cells in my body buzzing with joy. And um, for those of you that are watching this video or, you know, just connecting with me for the very first time, I want to share uh, my intention with this video and generally the channel so you know where I'm coming from with what I'm offering. So the purpose of this channel is to assist you in reawakening and remembering who you are on a multidimensional level and to help you align with your heart's intuitive knowing, uh, your intuition, and to provide you with uh, maybe new perspective, new perspectives, channeled information, and light language transmissions and other ascension tools to assist you on your journey. And um, <clears throat> before I get into the transmission, I wanted to also thank everybody that has been posting um, timestamps under uh, my recent videos. I did uh, have the intention to do it myself uh, for every video, and I did do it uh, for a while, and it is true that recently I haven't gotten to do that. It's simply because... Um, it takes a long time for me to um, get my videos to the state where I can actually post them. So usually it takes about three days for me to fully, um, let's say, uh, be able to translate the transmissions that want to come through um, as I am reading the, <clears throat> the collective's energy. And as I'm guided by my higher self, um, I need about three days. Sometimes it happens in half an hour, but um, I need about three days to sit with um, what I'm guided to do and um, yeah, really start embodying that energy and understanding all of the information that I meant to share with you guys um, and also understanding how to split up the, that energy. So um, as uh, all of you know that have been following me for a while, you know that um, I rarely post videos that just have one transmission um, in that video. I usually split it up in, in parts, and that is simply due to the fact that um, the main way in which I have been working for the last 10 years has been uh, working with the subconscious mind. That's still a huge part of my work today, and it will remain, I guess, uh, for the rest of my life. And so through understanding the intricacies and the, the delicacies, like the really the delicate parts um, of working with the subconscious and unconscious mind, that's how I, I kind of like understand how to split these transmissions up because um, I do think that there are like so many light language channels um, out there um, and um, there was one woman that I listened to when I uh, started with my only language transmissions but I can't remember her name but she's, she was really good. Um, so I do think that um, a lot of people can offer this, but I think um, since light language is always connected to the intent um, of the person that is channeling it, I do think that it's very important to have um, an intention that is as clear as possible. So that's why for me, I break it down in, in a, a few transmissions per video, just so we can really address um, the specific parts of that energy instead of like uh, just doing a very broad kind of um, transmission uh, which is obviously beneficial I'm not saying that the way others do it is not beneficial um, but I just think um, yeah it's just more focused and more clear and um, is able to address things in a more um, let's say refined way right um, and obviously after I understand the energy I meant to share with you guys, there's always like cognitive information that I'm supposed to understand and share. Um, whenever I'm guided to, I also do research on that. 
Um, and then obviously I have to, um, you know, create the time between all of my sessions and everything that I'm doing and my baby and my partner, my family life, my personal life and uh, record the videos. Then, you know, they have to be edited and I have to write a description text. And um, so there, you know, like maybe three, four hours that go into that for me to actually um, like record it and finish it. Um, and um, sometimes it just slips my mind to do the timestamps just because I would have to actually go back and watch the entire video, which at the beginning I did do that uh, when I started this channel. But then I realized that my human self, my Alexandra, <laughs> uh, can get a bit anxious or um, insecure if I watch the whole thing all over again before I post it. Um, so I don't usually do that anymore, um, only when I want to listen to the transmissions myself, um, just because I want to stay in that surrendered and divinely guided state where I know that this, if this is what I was guided to do, then this is how it's supposed to happen. And I don't want to second guess myself, right? So this is why I haven't been able to um, do the timestamps myself. And thank you so, so much for everybody that's supporting me with that and contributing to this channel and, um, you know, everybody that's listening to my transmissions. Okay, so as I mentioned, the topic today um, is going to be stepping into the age of Aquarius. Um, as you all know, we just had this uh, amazing Saturn-Jupiter conjunction. Um, I was going to do a transmission on that, but it just didn't work out. I had so, so many beautiful souls that booked um, their own soul signature light language transmissions and soul signature readings um, after my last two videos. And um, yeah, I just had a lot of work to do and... Um, um, yeah, I just, um, it didn't fit into my schedule. Um, but I'm hoping this transmission is going to be, uh, even better than what I could have done if I had the time. <laughs> um, and before we get into the transmissions, I wanted to kind of break down for you what, um, the Piscean age meant, which we were in and what the age of Aquarius means. So first of all, I think it's important to mention here that uh, m most of the astrologers are unable to actually say when this um, shift into the Aquarian age actually um, is taking place. Uh, some said it, it, it already happened, some say it's happening now, some say it's going to be happening in the future. But at the end of the day, um, time doesn't really exist. Everything is happening at the same time on different dimensions and, you know, in different metaphysical ways. So it doesn't really even matter. Um, and also additionally to that, <clears throat> we create our own reality through our thoughts, uh, which is a topic I'm going to be getting into today as well. So as long as the majority of people on our planet consider and think and believe that we are entering the age of Aquarius now, then that's what's going to be happening, right? Um, but yeah, so let's look at, <clears throat> let's look at, um, I'm going through a little bit of a, uh, like, cold a little bit. So uh, let's look at the um, Piscean Age. So the Piscean Age is dominated by hierarchy and power. Um, the Let's say the phrase you can um, focus on here is really to be or not to be. So to be in alignment with that um, given hierarchy and the power structure or not being at all, meaning... If we wouldn't have done that and we wouldn't uh, be have been compliant and wouldn't have followed that hierarchy and those uh, power structures, we wouldn't actually have been able to, to survive, right? And that's one of the <clears throat> biggest issues for light workers and star seeds, right? Because we came here with this Aquarian consciousness um, and we can see through this veil of illusion and understand that these structures are not real and that these structures are negatively polarized. And so throughout our, our incarnational cycles, um, we felt the need to like not be with them. And so a lot of us split out of that um, kind of lifestyle and were, you know, <clears throat> 
kind of like living in a lot of isolation, which is changing now, especially because now the age of Aquarius is all connected to networking and community. So we are all finding each other, especially through the internet um, and connecting to our soul family, our soul group and like-minded uh, people and can really kind of step into that sense of belonging and embracing our own power and our own weirdness and knowing that there are so many people out there that um, think in the same way and resonate with us and see things in the, in the same way, right? Which is kind of like what's also happening here with this platform, right? With Heart Essence. So I'm really happy about that. Um, so Pisces is a lot um, connected a lot with what we believe in. So that is why we can also say that the Piscean age <clears throat> was all about needing to find someone or something to believe in um, and also attaching ourselves to that just so that we are guided and know how to live. So that could have been um, a religion, right? The Piscean age is very strongly connected to religions, um, a political ideology, um, you know, any type of leader um, or also identifying ourselves with our work, right? So when we look at, you know, the 80s or the 90s, for example, or even further down, um, you know, the different caste systems in different um, cultures, or also even in the in the medieval times, right? People were very identified with what with their work. So even a lot of family names, when you look at um, different languages, are actually connected to a person's job, um, which is not so much the case anymore. Also because just due to um, political situations um, and people being, um, you know. Um, kind of like uh, marginalized, a lot of people changed their names or uh, completely or just changed a few letters in the name just so that, uh, you know, they can be identified um, immediately, right? Uh, or people just change from country to country and so the names just got um, changed just through, you know, the way people would pronounce the name and how they would um, write the name. But um, generally, this aspect of identifying with our work, with um, political ideologies and religions or a specific leader, um, that was very strong in the Piscean Age. And so I wanted to uh, read out a quote for you. By the way, this is going to be quite a long video and I have a lot of stuff here to share with you <laughs> uh, and a few books uh, to suggest in case you're interested uh, to read more about uh, what I'm talking about here. But I want to read out a quote for you out of this book, The Science of Religion by Sri Sri Paramahansa Yogananda. This is the book. I hope you can see it properly with the light. Um, on religion, right? So it says, so if the, motives, if the motives for the actions of all men are traced further and further back, the ultimate motive will be around the same with all the removal of pain and the attainment of bliss. This end being universal, it must be looked upon as the necessary one. And what is universal and most necessary for man is, of course, religion to him. Hence, religion necessarily consists in the permanent removal and the re uh, removal of pain and the realization of bliss or God. So this is how we define or we can define if it resonates, religion, it doesn't matter which religions, all religions are based on the idea of um, coming or stepping out of or liberating ourselves out of pain and suffering and aligning with bliss, happiness, joy, or God consciousness, however we define that, right? Um, and I think this um, definition is uh, really um, important because in the age of, uh, of Pisces, as I said, we were looking outside of ourselves to a leader, to a religion, to a guru, to a teacher, to a priest or whatever for them to guide us on how we can step out of this pain and suffering and how we can align with this God consciousness or our God self or happiness, joy, bliss, whatever. Now, what that led to was obviously a very high degree of um, servitude um and victim consciousness because if we constantly constantly need to uh, look outside of ourselves uh, to somebody to guide us and to show us what to do 
that makes us feel powerless, right? Because that means that we don't know what to do and that we cannot decide for ourselves what we can do or cannot do. That is where this powerlessness and victim consciousness um, steps in, right? And also this submissive kind of energy where, you know, um, you know, let's say our religious leader tells us that we have to do this and then we just have to do it. Like we have to keep ourselves small. We have to keep our head down and we have to bow down to this and we have to do it exactly the way it is told. Um, and it's really interesting. There's a saying in, in Romanian, <clears throat> for those of you that don't know, uh, my father is uh, Greek Romanian. So I spent a few years of my life in Romania uh, when uh, I was growing up. And there's a saying in Romanian, um, I'm just going to translate it. It's not going to sound as good, but um, basically um, it's something like, you know, as long as you keep your head down, the sword won't cut it, right? Um, and this is basically very connected to the Spicean Age. So you were you couldn't just be like the black sheep, the black sheep or the rainbow colored sheep. You couldn't um, step outside of that um, hierarchy, right? Because you just wouldn't survive. It just wouldn't work. Um, you would have been kicked out of your community or maybe killed, um, enslaved, uh, tortured, and so on, right? Um, and especially connected to um, these religious um, figures. And I think a big part of the Aquarian age is understanding that we don't need um, these outside leaders, these outside teachers, gurus, uh, political leaders, or um, whatever, to come out of this pain and suffering and come into bliss. And we can see this shift in consciousness um, already in our society when we look back and see how, for example, uh, you know, in the 60s, people started, <clears throat> even in the West, practicing yoga, meditating, um, you know, um, and starting to really incorporate all these practices where we ourselves, by ourselves, obviously, you know, we do get initiated into these practices, but then... Once you learn that practice, you take it home with you and you are the master, right? You are the one who works on themselves. Um, so we we have been moving out of this um, energy for a while now, but this is going to increase exponentially. Um, and we can already see how um, a lot of people nowadays don't, they say, I'm not religious, I'm spiritual, right? And this is an Aquarian trait. Um, so we have been understanding that this pain and suffering that we're all kind of like universally trying to step out of, according to this book, which I, does truly resonate with me, um, can be happen can can happen through ourselves, by ourselves, for ourselves, you know, with ourselves, um, instead of um, depending on something outside of self, our, uh, outside of ourselves <laughs> um, to to do that, and also understanding that that bliss, that joy, the happiness, that God consciousness is within us right um so i think that's a massive massive shift i'm so excited about this um another energy connected to the piscean age is really um secrecy and hiding and what i mean by that is two things uh on the one side it was you know the secrecy and the hiding of these leaders be it political or religious leaders you know where um they were uh, you know hidden behind certain walls in monasteries in ashrams in in palaces in you know um you know political buildings or whatever and you know the the the, the broad masses were kind of like uh, not included and they were completely excluded out of what was happening there and where those leaders were talking and deciding about the faith of of the the broad masses right so there was that energy of um you know secrecy there on the other side there was an energy of secrecy as well which is also um very visible in the light worker and starseed community which was that if we decided to go against the grain we had to step in secrecy because otherwise we would have been killed um so this is again like you know this um this these polarities right um the Piscean Age is very connected to vertical hierarchies. So it's this very masculine type of thinking where we want to step up the ladder um, and kind of like we, everybody's for themselves and I want to be the best and I want to become a CEO. I want to advance and raise myself above um, the, the broad masses of people. And um, this is, again, something we're going to be stepping out of, right, um, with the Age of Aquarius. Um, we are going to um, be the ones determining what is right and what is wrong for us and um, 
we won't have to constantly um, look outside of ourselves to other people, to these leaders, to decide what to do. And we have come to a place where we understand, yes, I can embrace my weirdness. Yes, I can be myself. Yes, I am loved the way I am. And now with this understanding and with this self-belief, right? Moving from that belief in something else outside of us, we moved into self-belief. Now um, we become our own authority. We become our own point of reference, right? Because we are the Godhead. We are God consciousness. And um, uh, planetary alignments like the Saturn-Jupiter conjunction are the ones which kind of like carry these crystalline codes and activate us in a way where we remember all of these things. And obviously... Um, there's going to be many more things and it's not just the planetary line and there's so many other things that um, contribute to us rem remembering and reminding ourselves and kind of like tapping into that energy of us being the Godhead. But um, this is definitely a, a major conjunction that's uh, contributing to this energy. Um, and what's also important to mention is that this Piscean age has or this Piscean way of thinking, it has been the foundation of our human consciousness in the last 2,000 years. So all of the energies we will be clearing today are energies which you have taken on through your blood, right, from your bloodline, your maternal, your paternal bloodline, and also in all of your soul's experiences that had to do with the Piscean Age. Um, and throughout all the generations, right? So this, these things are so deeply ingrained. Uh, just think of how many generations have lived there, uh, like in that time frame, al alone in your bloodline. As a soul, we can kind of like travel through time. So you could be here right now, uh, stepping into 2021, 20, and maybe your last incarnation was in the 1930s, and maybe your next one is going to be in like 5,050 or whatever. I don't know, because time isn't linear. But generally, just the genetic information you brought in from your ancestral lines, um, these 2,000 years, um, this is like massive, right? So that's why I think I'm so excited to offer uh, these transmissions to you. Um, and I want to um, also add um, a personal story into this, which uh, was something that happened last year. And I was exactly at the point where I knew I have to start uh, stepping up in my work and have to start... Um, aligning with my higher self, I've just been getting this guidance, like higher self, higher self, higher self. Okay, what is the higher self? How do I connect with the higher self? And you know, what is all of this? And what it, whatever, I didn't even know anything about it that much. I mean, obviously I was connected to my higher self, but it wasn't something that I really um, thought about on a conscious level so much. And then once I understood it, I understood everything. And once I kind of like uh, started that, let's say, more direct communication, that's when I understood I've been doing it all along, but I just didn't have a name for it. Um, but yeah, that's when, you know, I was like, okay, I have to do this. I really have to focus on this now. Um, I want to embody my higher self. That's my intention. This is the intention I set every single day when I wake up. Uh, my intention is to be aligned with and embody my higher self today and every day of my life. Um, if it resonates, you can try to set that intention uh, on a daily basis as well, obviously. So as I was going through this entire process of understanding my own sovereignty and my own authority in my own life, uh, which, as I said, is a huge topic for the Aquarian age, and I'm sure that a lot of light workers and star seeds went through the same process last year or perhaps this year, because we are those bringers of the new codes, right? Um, <clears throat> so for those who might have been too young to start earlier or just, you know, uh, maybe had other things to learn or integrate, I'm sure um, that probably there's been going to be a lot of resonance in, in what I'm going to say in case you haven't, um, you know, connected to this before uh, last year or this year. But um, yeah, I was guided to... really focus on uh, my higher self and my own divinity and understanding that I am the authority in my life and I'm the only energy that I need to um, connect to when I want information or when I want to take a decision. Um, and how I'm going to explain that is that basically when I went to India, uh, it's almost 
10 years now. When I went to India for the very first time, that was very awakening for me. I, um, and every time I was in India, it was a huge blessing. I love India. But there was a very interesting energy that I was uh, kind of like confronted with which was this strong bhakti, um, devotional, surrendered energy people have there. And I'm sure not only in, in India, I saw it in Sri Lanka as well, and I'm sure it's in many more um, countries in Asia and all over the world. But, um, you know, mostly living in a modern Western country, even though I moved around a lot throughout my entire life, um, I didn't see that much uh, where I lived, you know, in the countries that I lived in. Um, obviously, I saw people praying, going to the church and, you know, whatever, but I haven't seen that type of energy where people go to the temple every day, where people do all of these practices. And, you know, even just this gesture of that you see there often in the temples where people really bow down with their whole body, you know, and just lie their, lay their whole body on the floor and like just go like this, right? That was something very new to me. Um, and it was exactly the energy I needed in that time because I was supposed to let go of my ego and be in that completely surrendered state and understand that I can trust the divine uh, and just give myself to the divine, right? And to, to my own path. Um, <clears throat> so it was very, very beneficial. And it was exactly what I needed. But at the same time, uh, being in that energy a lot because I lived there quite um, a long time uh, and was there several months in the year for, for many years, um, it, it kind of like influenced my own uh, sense of authority and empowerment a bit. Um, and I would say that towards the end when I became aware of it, I noticed that it wasn't um, exactly what was meant for me. Right, so I think depending on our um, soul lessons, soul contracts, the things that we're meant to learn, different teachings and different ways of thinking are always going to resonate with us and are going to be good for us, and others won't. Right, so what may be may be good for me might completely be something that is not good for you. Um, for me, this energy of empowerment and believing in myself and trusting in myself and becoming egoistic in a healthy way. And um, integrating the shadow aspect of the the narcissist, just um, you know as an energy so that I can be my own authority and understand that, hey, you know, like this is where you end and I begin and uh, there are clear, clear boundaries there and uh, I'm going to be assertive and maintain them. Um, so that uh, unconditional self-trust and empowerment, that is my lesson for this incarnation, right? If somebody is in this narcissistic energy and kind of like walks all over people and whatever, my my energy or, or what I'm talking about in my videos or what I have to share from my own experience is probably not going to be the right, the right um, energy for them because they need to go exactly on the opposite side where they learn to humble themselves and kind of like come down from their high horse, you know? Uh, and in my case, I had to understand, wait a minute, I'm not here and others are there. I'm on the same level with them. So we're even. Um, but um, yeah, it's been a huge journey with India and I learned a lot, but I was also able to see how um, this energy of constantly being in that mindset of bowing down to um, a religious leader, entity um, or religious symbol of any kind outside of yourself can also start to be detrimental. So there is a shadow aspect about this surrendered state where we are in this bhakti devotional uh, energy where we give our power away because we, we kind of like give all our hopes and dreams to this outside energy, be it a god or a symbol or whatever, a priest or whatever. Um, but we don't always necessarily take the right action to change our lives because we're just like, you know, this thing outside of me is going to do that for me. Um, but that's not how it goes. You know, <laughs> we have to obviously work in alignment with the universe, but it's not just about, uh, you know, telling the universe, hey, please help me with this or da, 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 da. You also have to follow the steps that are shown to you. And so it's a mix of being in your feminine and kind of like being becoming that magnet for what you want to manifest in your life 
and being in that receiving and surrendered state, but we also have to have a balanced masculine energy where we can go in outside, or, you know, go into the world, penetrate the world and get what we want and take those action steps. So it's that balance between the feminine, the masculine, the water and the fire energy. And so what I noticed in countries like India is that they are very much in this feminine energy um, <clears throat> where they kind of get lost in that a lot. This is how I perceived it. I'm not talking about, about India. I'm not talking about, about uh, you know, um, Hinduism or anything like that. I'm just talking about my experience and how I saw it. And I don't want to like offend anybody or whatever. As I said that, you know, my time in India completely changed me. Uh, I'm so grateful for each and every single moment, and it was a huge um, learning experience for me. Um, and I'm sure I'm going to be going there uh, very soon again, you know, and, and I love it there. Um, <clears throat> so it has to be a mix. So as I was working on myself last year and wanted to step into that sovereignty, step into that authority, step into the embodiment of my higher self, my higher self guided me to completely remove all spiritual pictures uh, from my home. So I have an, an altar um, where I had an altar where I had different pictures of the different spiritual spiritual teachers, a lot of them from India, like, um, you know, Mahaftar Babaji or, you know, Sadhguru or, um, you know, Nisakadatta Maharaj and like just different people, it doesn't even matter who. Um, but yeah, I had these different pictures because um, it made me feel like I'm connecting to them as I was, you know, doing my practices or just kind of like wanting to be in, in my sacred space. And I was guided to remove them uh, because my higher self said, listen, all of these things you're praying to and these people, they are just a part of you. And you have to stop praying towards something that's outside of you because it's all in you. You are the only one creating reality, changing reality and bringing everything into being that you want to have. So stop looking outwards, go within, it's all within. So I removed all of those pictures. Uh, I worked on through all of these uh, layers uh, of, you know, uh, victim consciousness, powerlessness, you know, not, uh, not being uh, in my sovereign uh, state and my own authority also connected to, to my spirituality, right? And at some point, my higher self said, okay, now you're ready. Now, whatever pictures you want to put up again, you can. But to be honest, I don't have an altar anymore. I do have one, <clears throat> but it's more um, kind of like um, for my ancestors and uh, with different objects and crystals and things that I use if I want to uh, make a ceremony or um, do some kind of, uh, you know, ritual of some kind. Uh, let's say, I don't know, um, manifest something or... Um, you know, maybe write something down and burn it <clears throat> in a chalice or whatever, stuff like that. Uh, I don't do any complicated rituals. <laughs> but um, yeah, if there is some kind of practice I want to do um, at a specific moment in time or something I want to manifest or release, um, I have all of the objects, as I said, like a chalice or, you know, different things that I use, my candles and crystals and whatever. I have them uh, on that altar, but it's not the way I used to have it, right? And I thought that's an interesting thing to, to kind of like integrate because I think, I think it's very important for us to understand that we create these gods, um, the fairies, the unicorns, the gods, the, whatever you want to call them. Um, and it is through our belief in their existence and our spiritual and devotional practices that they remain in place. Um, so all of these deities, let's say the Indian deities, Hanuman and, uh, I don't know, uh, Shiva and whatever, it's not like they don't exist, they exist. But at the same time, somewhere down the line, I don't know exactly when, some people thought of these beings and started praying towards them. And that's how these energies came into existence and, um, their energy grew and with each and every single person that prays to these gods, that is how their energy continues to grow, right? Um, this is at least how I was shown that it is. And obviously these gods are also symbols of specific energies in the universe. Um, so when you look at the, in the, in Hinduism, you know, you have Brahma, Vishnu, 
um, and Shiva, they all stand for different things, right? So um, it's not like they, they weren't there before a person thought about them because when you look at them from the perspective of these gods being the representation of specific energies of the universe um, and just being like an image that stands for those energies, then they were already there before. But a person picked up on those energies in the universe and gave them a name and a symbol of how they look. Um, and that is when humans started feeding these energies with more energy. And that is how these archetypes got integrated into our subconscious mind as a collective, right? Um, <clears throat> so I hope that was understandable. <laughs> but I thought it's very important to go through that. And even when you look at the, the energy of karma, right, even this, um, that's also something I've seen in India and I see it with people that are from India in my sessions, right, um, or even in Christianity, you know, this belief in going to hell um, or getting this punishment because of something we did in, in the past because of this, you know, law of karma. It's not like these things don't exist, but the thing is, there is nothing outside of you that is going to punish you or do anything to you because of something you did. Um, you are the one that when you're in between lives, you go back, you contemplate on everything you did and you're like, man, you know, I messed that one up. You know, I really want to go back and make things right again. And then you just come back into the physical body and you probably meet the same person or a similar person and you go through a similar experience so you can do it better next time, right? Um, so even that can become constricting and limiting to our being when we believe in all of these dogmatic things and we have these representations of power and these leaders and these religions and these things outside of us um, that we bow down to and give our power to. And this is completely, you know, this Piscean energy and that is what we're stepping out of. That being said, I have absolutely no issues with religion. I do believe that religion has its place, all of the religions. I believe that there's something good in every religion. I do believe that humans distorted these religions a lot and distorted the teachings and changed the teachings. Just like, you know, when you look at um, the aspect of reincarnation, there are a few passages um, in the Bible that clearly hint towards reincarnation, but at the same time, the teachings about it were completely taken out. Um, and that is simply due to political reasons, because the leaders of that time felt that if they would tell people that they only live one life, then those people, the broad masses, will feel more pressure to adhere to the rules and be good people in alignment with what the rulers thought what that means, what that means, you know, what their, the rules were that they gave us. Um, so people basically feel like, okay, I have only one life. If I don't, you know, stick to the rules that they're giving me, I'm going to go to hell or I'm going to be stuck in karma or whatever. Something terrible is going to happen. And so that's why this aspect of reincarnation was taken, taken out of the Bible. Um, but let's move to the Aquarian age and look at these energies. So the Aquarian age is all about networks, information, com and community. Um, it's all about what we know. So we already went through all of these energies where we had to look outside of ourselves and find something to believe in that would tell us what we need to know and we didn't know it otherwise, or at least we thought we didn't know it otherwise. Um, and now we're moving into this energy where we understood, okay, I know. Whatever is right for me, I'm going to know it, and I'm the one who decides. I am my own authority, right? Um, also, since it's, the, we're, it's so connected to the energy of networking and community, there won't be any secrets anymore. And that's what we can already see a lot, like all of these whistleblowers um, putting all of these documents out, uh, all of these um, you know, former CEOs or managers of huge corporations stepping out and telling the truth, right? Um, so this information is becoming more and more visible. Also now this year, you know, we've had so many police uh, people stepping up and writing official letters about the fact that they don't agree uh, with um, the things that they were supposed to be doing uh, in order to maintain the peace uh, with these new regulations that came in this year um, due to, you know, I, I don't want to <laughs> mention it just because of the censorship. Uh, but, you know, what I'm talking about... Um, and, you know, we've been having so many people posting about their experience um, this year. 
And a lot of the experience were absolutely not aligned with what we were seeing in the media. But the good thing is that we are connecting. And of course, there's this energy of censorship. It's just the last pushback, but that's going to disappear because we are stepping into this energy of community and networking. And the secrets are going to disappear. People are going to be able to communicate even better. Um, even this 5G thing, even though it has its negative sides, but I do believe that, um, you know, uh, having like a stronger network is going to be part of this um, networking and community feeling that is coming along, like coming along with the age of Aquarius. Um, but I do think that, you know, more information is going to come out about that as well. Um, compared to the Piscean age, we are not going to be organized in a top down or vertical uh, way. It's going to be all horizontal. Um, that is also a thing that is very typical uh, for, you know, this fe divine feminine energy that we're stepping into. Um, where, you know, just like, you know, the hen takes care of all of her little babies and takes, uh, them under her wings, right? It's like, everything is equal. Like we are all equal. We are all kind of like belong to one, uh, one unit. Um, and so there's going to be much more equality. Um, and at the same time, we're going to focus much more on ourselves. So if in the, Piscean age, we had to stick to these tribal or community rules in order to survive and couldn't kind of like create our own reality or create our own sense of self. Um, now this is going to uh, grow exponentially. So we have had these years now or the last generations of people who were kind of already discovering who they are, starting with the 60s. Also, obviously, the three waves of volunteer volunteers, as Dolores Cannon uh, describes them from the information she received in her hypnosis sessions. Um, and generally, the star seeds uh, incarnating on Earth are part of, um, you know, this um, awakening of the self, right? Because that's what we're here for, right? To help everybody awaken to who they are um, in many different unique creative ways, right? Um, but the focus is going to be on the self as a whole person that doesn't need to believe in anything outside of themselves or uh, adhere to anything outside of itself um, that doesn't feel true to them. Um, so it's a very rebellious energy. That's why I also think we had all of these um, demonstrations this year because people are just like, you know what, like, I don't trust you. <laughs> like, no, I'm not going to uh, stick to these stupid rules, right? Uh, so again, this is a very Aquar Aquarian thing. I also want to mention I'm not an astrologer, but it's something I'm very passionate about. Um, and it's also just energies you can feel when you have the ability to tap into the collective energy. You can just read all of these things. It doesn't even matter if you're an astrologer or not, you know. Um, okay, so exactly. We came into the point where we know we have all the knowledge and the wisdom in ourselves. We don't need somebody outside of ourselves to guide us. Um, and we also understand uh, the power of ourself, really, like what we're capable to do. We're all going to be more curious about where our own gifts and how to share them with the community, uh, especially it being a horizontal type of community. People are going to be, you know, sharing goods, trading like, hey, OK, I'm good at uh, painting walls. OK, well, um, I'm good at teaching math. OK, can you teach my child math? And, uh, you know, I'm going to renovate your house or whatever. Um, it's going to be more like us sorting our own problems amongst ourselves instead of, as I said, focusing on, you know, the political system or something outside of ourselves to tell us how we can solve our issues, right? Um, also, this energy of uh, dogma is going to disappear um, and it's going to be replaced with curiosity and adventure. So Aquarius is very adventurous and very creative and very um, wise as well. So I think it's really important for us to understand that it's only when we go beyond what we already know that we can make new discoveries. And this is what we're doing right now. This is what is happening. Uh, we are stepping out of those old, outdated beliefs and dogmatic patterns um, and uh, hierarchical structures and we're moving into a completely new age, which can be scary for many of us. This year has been particularly scary for all, many of us or all of us. Uh, but it's important to keep the faith, stay in that allowance energy and understand that we create our reality through our intention, through the visions we hold in our heart. And as long as we focus on creating the best outcome for humanity and our planet and ourselves individually and collectively, 
that's what's going to happen because the power is within us, right? And even when people in the spiritual community talk about, you know, what are the Pleiadians saying or what are the whatever uh, Galactic Federation of Light saying, yes, these beings exist. They are also just fractals of ourselves that we are communicating with uh, and we are fractals of them. And um, still, we are the ones deciding what's happening with our planet because we have a free will choice, right? So um, when you go beyond all of these individuated aspects of consciousness called Alexandra, called, you know, you, whatever your name is, uh, called the Pleiadians, called, you know, Zeta Reticuli, whatever, it doesn't even matter. When you go beyond that, which is also actually an aspect of separation and you move into higher and higher and higher states of consciousness, you know that all of these things are just one being, one unlimited universal cosmic being. And it just is you know, split in different parts and these parts are called whatever. Um, but nobody outside of us is going to come save us. We have to save ourselves. And that is what we're slowly beginning to understand, right? And I have another quote I want to share with you. So also connected to this um, energy of karma and, you know, um, our lives and, and how this these power structures are happening and where our place in the world is. Um, it's from Living Magically. I really like this book. Um, a lot of the stuff that's in this book I already knew, but I just really like the way she um, breaks it down. And I like the, the language. It's just very bubbly and happy and positive. Um, so she says, each of us is the source of all of our suffering and all of our joy. Our problems are not caused by the world out there nor by God, faith, or karma, but by our own inner world. Each and every moment of our lives is created or allowed by our own beliefs, attitudes, thoughts, feelings, choices, desires, and expectations. So this is what we are slowly understanding, integrating, and this is where we're moving towards, where we start to understand the self. We already began understanding the self, and we are constantly going to be continuously working with the self and improving ourselves. Um, and this is also part of this Aquarian age, you know, where the self becomes so important and we um, step out of this tribal energy where it's in our detriment. Obviously, community is important and that's a huge aspect of the Aquarian age, but it's not going to be like, who, you know, like I have to like not be myself or I have to like hide parts of myself so I can belong to this community. It's like, hey, this is me. Now, let me just find the right community for me. You know, whereas before it was like, I'm in this community and I have to change myself and be unauthentic or hide parts of me so I can belong to this community. And now it's going to be the other way around. Like, who am I? Okay, I understand who I am. This is me. Okay, where's my tribe? You know, when we have internet and we have, you know, so many different ways of communicating, right? Okay, so after all of that is explained... Um, we're going to be getting into the transmissions. I hope uh, this is not too much talk for you guys. Uh, I am going to be putting the timestamps on this one. Uh, but uh, yeah, I just thought it's so important to go to these points. Um, and uh, um, it's just important to know where we're heading, right? Um, and really have faith that it's going to be exactly the way we want it to be because we're creating it, right? Okay, so let's move into the transmissions. These transmissions are going to be very powerful, so um, I suggest you drink a lot of water with them. And um, yeah, just listen to them as many times as you feel guided to. So the first part of the transmission is going to be all about clearing all of the subconscious and unconscious and ego level or soul level beliefs, programs, attachments, expectations, judgments, dogmatic um, and separation, hierarchical um, and limiting ways of being, expressing and relating in the world, right? Uh, all of these Piscean energies, we're going to be clearing all of that along with all of the trauma um, that we suffered as a soul and also the ancestral uh, trauma that we, um, you know, inherited through our bloodline, um, on an, but also not only that, but on an individual as well as collective um, level, including all the shadow and the karmic energies. 
Um, so obviously when you look back, you know, we had all of these religious wars, we had, you know, the witch hunts, um, and so, so many things, you know, the, the, you know, countries that went out and colonized other countries. And there's so many things that happened there. Um, when we talk, talk about karma on a collective level as well. Um, and I think that's also a very important aspect to clear. Um, so we can just be free of all these judgments. And if you're interested in clearing more of um, ancestral issues, I have a video for that. Um, I can't remember what it's called, but I think it's called Healing Ancestral uh, Trauma or something like that. Okay, so we're going to get into this transmission. Toroneheya keshitiriana kara o nekiara nekiya tashetitiya. Uriara tana hane yara naha aurea titiara kana hitiara ka. Shetiriti harayaka torono nehiara o no nekiara naya ka tatara orea ka shetiriataka. Ashatanana uri arenea keyara tekiara totoro o eyaraka eshiti. Torono ke niara nara ene hiarata o ke nea ki shitiriatara. E shitiriatara nahi iara kata o nene ne hiara na kayara. Ure ke shitiriara na ho ke ne niara na ke iara te shitiriara tara yana ke iara na unu ne hiara ka. Te kiriara to shotoro te ni hiara na kara ya niara kata. Tokoro no ne hiarata o ne kiara e shitiriataka. E shitiriara na ha karaya o koro to ne hini iara na ki iara teya. Te shitiriara kara na hanaya to renia e yara no kiara na o kiara te shitiriataka. Ta ne kiara o re kiara ta he iara ra o ro to ono ke iara na kiara. Toto one iara anakana tone kiara te shitiria ka ekia. Shoturo toke hiara na kayara hiara totoro te kiara na anayana. Tokoro no ne shitiara na ki iara ta otoro to etiara na ki iara na shitiria ta ka. Shetiria na hayara ka ra toro te te iara na ka o shoturo to heni iara ka aya. E shitiriata ka te nene hiara na ya ne kiara te kiara to rororo te ne hiara na na kara na iara. O koro no ne hiara na re ne ne hiara ta e shitiriata ka ra ya ne iara ne kiara. To koro ne iara na na ke e iara na ko iara te shitiriara na ra ya ore. He ne kiara na to shotoro te kiara ha kara na te. Na hene ya raka shatiri ya raka ra oro totoro to eni ya ra. Toro eni hi ya ra naki i ya ra na shetiri ya naka ra toto to te ki ya ra. To shotoro to no ki ni ya ra na ra ya ne ki ya ra. No koro ne ya ra ne shetiri ya ta ka ra te ki ya ra. Te shetere ne hi ya ra na ka ra ya na ha ra ya ra totoro to eni ya ra naka. O re ne hiara te ne hiara na o re ara ka na to 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 ro ne kia e shitiriata ka. Shara ka re ne hiara na kuru to to e ne kiara na ketia ara na oro oro e re ara ka tarata. Ha ka ra na kiara na e shitiriata ka ra to ro to to e kiara na ha asha te te ya ka ra ta a re ya. Toro ho no he ni ara na he ki a ta to su toro tono ho te ki a ra ari a ana e ni ana to koro to te ni ana a sa te ne ne hi a ra ta ke i a ra te ti a ka. Ok. Um... So the next part of the transmission is going to be about, um, you know, entering this new era of Aquarius. So it's going to be more of an activation. We cleared basically um, the Piscean energies. And as I said, 
Uh, this is all of my transmissions. It's good to listen to it a few times. Um, and every time you listen to, to any of my transmission is, uh, transmissions, they clear uh, more on a deeper level. So more and more and deeper and deeper. And at some point, in case the energies that are addressed um, or through the transmissions or the intention um, has been, let's say, fulfilled 100%, then you'll know you don't need to listen to it anymore, right? Um, you just feel it, basically. But depending on, you know, your lifestyle and what's happening in your life, you can always return back to them whenever you feel guided to, as long as this channel will exist. And um, I intend to continue with it for as long as I can. Um, so that was the clearing and now we're getting into this activation. So we're going to be aligning with, um, sorry, all the energies, um, of the Aquarian age, including obviously these 5D frequencies that we're, um, have been stepping into and are stepping into, uh, but also the energy of individuality, creativity, self-expression, wisdom, higher knowledge, uh, divine feminine energies, right? Um, the community connection and inclusion and unconditional love, but not in this Piscean style where we had to compromise ourselves to be part of this community, um, but really in a self-honoring way, right? And in an authentic way. Um, and also these energies of really becoming our own leader, our own teacher, our own guru, embodying the higher self and knowing that we are the only uh, real authority um in our life and that we are sovereign beings right this is also part of this aquarian um aquarian age uh, consciousness okay かしょてにひらなら Eki yara na o te kiria tasha tara tore ya na ki inia. Na heti ya kara ato shotoro to ke yara hana ke yara tahara ya. Shetiri ti hi yara na rokoro to reki yara na ra heni ya na ke ya tasha te tia. Tara na heki yara tasha toro to ne heni ya ra kata na ko te dea. Shotoro no he i ara kana he ya hasha te re te ki ara ta ne ke tiri a ta ra ori a ka. Ke ti ara na kotoro to he ni ki a sha te re te ara kana he ni ara e ara ta na he ki ara. Shotoro na hara e ni a kata ra o ne ki ara ta sha te te a. He ni a ki a ta ta ori a ra ka ne ne hi a ra na o i a ra. Ene hi yara totoro te ni hi yara na ke i yara na sheti hi ya. Te ni hi ki yara tana ya ore ne hi yara tora tana han na kara ne hi yara te sheti ya taka. Ashata ne hi yara ka toro to no he ni yara kara te hi ya ki ki yara ta o ni yara na e yara to shotoro to. Hasheti ne ni hi yara tore yara kana he yara tara uri ki yara te shitiri atakara e ni a ka ana. Ashe ne hi yara naka uri ki yara tana kotoro ono he yara naka yara e yara tana. Toro te ne hi ni yana kosho toro e yara tana haki i ne yara na ori ki yara ta. Asha te ne ne hi ara na uri ara ke ne hi ara tore ne hi ara kata. Te ne ya na raya kuro to te ya he ni ara ke shitiri ataka. Tokoro na hana ke ya ra totoro to te ne hi ne shiti ya ra kara hui ya ra te ki ya ra na ha ne. Ne he ri ya ra ra toro totoro ne hi ne ya na ka shitiri atara ya hor e ya ra te ki ya tara tara ya. Tanahan 
So beautiful souls, um, I hope that uh, these two transmissions are really going to be helpful for you. Um, I love you all very, very much. And um, obviously, if um, anybody's interested in their own one-on-one -on -one session with me or would like uh, an energy reading session or a soul signature reading session, which is where we go into, you know, your galactic origin, the primary lessons your soul chose to learn, um, you know, your primary chakra that you experience your reality to, which is very important. So you can really have a um, kind of like a frame of reference for, um, you know, what's important for you to stay embodied with your soul and stay really like embody your soul frequency um, in each down moment and many more other interesting things. Or if you would like a your own personal language transmission, uh, my contact information is going to be below. My email is going to appear also at the end of the video. It's going to be below as well. Um, if you want to, um, you know, uh, read more of the channel information I bring through, uh, you can follow me on Facebook or Instagram. These uh, The links are going to be below as well. And uh, yeah, I'm sending you so, so much love. Uh, I'm wishing all of you uh, the most beautiful holidays or Merry Christmas if you celebrate Christmas. Um, I hope you all had a beautiful solstice. Um, my family already met today um, and I decided to stay back for a day and stay here so I can finish up on um you know all the the orders for the language transmissions and um, the soul signature readings that came through uh last week and also to be able to record this video for you guys um but i will be joining uh everybody tomorrow i'm so excited about the holidays and uh yeah i am sending you so much love i wish you all the best i hope these transmissions are going to help you really align with um, the energies of where we are moving towards, right? Our path as a collective and help you really uh, be in your heart and stay aligned with your heart's true essence as we're navigating these shifts. Um, so you can be in your own power, your own authenticity and, uh, you know, be positive and feel empowered through these uh, shifts in consciousness and global shifts that we're moving through and uh, I'm sending you a very big virtual hug and I'm going to see you soon. Bye. Mwah.